Welcome everybody um, to Mentoring Hub Session 2. We're talking about vision and have you got one for you as a mentor? So that's where we're going to go today. These um, are my details. If you um, want to contact Pepper a little bit more about some of our Mentoring Hub work, please contact me and we can follow up and have further conversations. Need to acknowledge the lands on which we meet presently. I'm coming to you from Yugo lands here today out in Ipswich, and it's the home of the Warpay tribe in my area. So I want to acknowledge the traditional owners past, present and emerging and acknowledge any people who are watching this recording now um, and say thank you for sharing your uh, lands, your customs and your laws. But if you're watching this now as a recording, um, where there's moments where we say, think about this, just take a moment and reflect quietly and think about what you'd like to do in regards to some of the questions we're asking, because that helps drive your thinking forward and helps you progress as a mentor in this process. We have our usual disclaimers and copyrights as well, um, because if you're welcome to use this information, we create it um, for the functions of palliative care education and training as we're funded by the federal government and Department of Health to support all of healthcare workforce learn more about palliative care. So the Pepper Mentoring Hub lives under that auspice. If you'd like to use any of our material, feel free. Just reference it like you normally would any of the material we use. So when we come together for these sessions, we always have a way of presenting. So we, this is the fourth capacity of the seven capacities of leadership that Otto Sharma defines in new theory. And the fourth capacity is that we come together with an open mind, so we're curious, an open heart, so we're compassionate and an open will to have courage. And always we have self-care and, you know, we're really looking out for ourselves in this moment and coming together to do learning is really part of that. And we're compassionate. Um, we're compassionate to hear the story of others, but also we um, have compassion for self, which often is something that when we're not doing as well, we offer compassion out to others freely. We're often not good at giving it to ourselves. So that's what I'd like to see different in the universe very soon, I think. Today, we're thinking about this idea of what is the vision? Um, why do we need one? How can we work towards our vision? The plan ahead. Well, how do we then make it all come together? Um, and, and then what does a five-year plan look like? So in PEPA, we have developed a five-year plan. And for this hub session, um, if you're watching this video as a recording, you'll see in the learning management system that you've joined up through, there was actually a link to a five-year plan document that we created in Pepper. Really great if you could download that um, as a writable PDF, start working through it, go, how does that work for you? Um, and as that can help just make you plan and think more about it. Because as it says here, to create a vision is important because that's the thing that makes you wanna jump out of bed in the morning. So that's what we're trying to think about. So here's a definition of a vision. So I was very formal and got it out of a psychology dictionary because I thought that'd be a bit fun. Uh, so basically, I like these definitions for a few reasons, but I'll let you read them for a moment. And then have a thought. The part that I think are interesting is it's sight. It's where the eye is the receiver and the stimulant is expressive with much energy inside the visible spectrum. So basically it's, it's talking about that concept of seeing and noticing and then taking learning and energy from that. Um, and I think that's what it's so important in a vision. And that third point of a cognitive picture. So you're creating a mental image and a vision of something that 
you want to be that will give you energy. So not take your energy or be hard work and too hard to do. A vision should be something that you aspire to be and that holds you holds a strong focus for you. Um, and I just like these few quotes. Um, when you start Googling visions and how to create visions and everything, oh, the world just opens up in plentiful amounts. Uh, so these are just nice ways to think about it. Your vision is not limited by what you can see, but what your mind can imagine. So how perfect is that? Um, and I love Jack Canfield. He is a, um, you know, a motivational speaker and he does a lot of corporate training to inspire people. And so I've always been a bit of a fan of his. Um, and he always talks about this, you only have control over three things in your life, the thoughts you think, the images you visualise and the actions you take. And I, I don't know, I really like that one as well. Um, that first quote actually comes from an astronaut as well. So I think, you know, you're looking at people who are driven, who have vision and focus and have really achieved great things and they inspiring other people. I mean, an astronaut inspires many future astronauts. Um, Jack Canfield works tirelessly every day with multiple people at high levels and, you know, has multi-million dollar selling books to inspire people to make change as well. So that's why I just think there is a lot of leaders in this world that are, have got this idea of vision really well thought out. But, you know, why do you need to do it? Why do you need to create a vision and a future plan? Uh, because, well, here's a good list of reasons, I think, that you might want to do it. Um, I think it helps you really get your focus. Today, what are your priorities? What do you want? Not what your children want you to be, not what your husband wants you to be, not what your partner wants you to be, not what your mum and dad want you to be. What do you want? What are your priorities? This is what this is all about. This is all about you for the moment. And I was actually in another conversation this morning where someone went, it's hard to do though because we think it's selfish, okay? But it's not. This is, you know, um, this is about you and um, you fulfilling your destiny. And sometimes we are a bit stuck in our lives and it's because we're not focusing on our priorities. We're focusing on everyone else's priorities. So um, that's why I think these things are really important. Um, it also helps you say no to things. And this is a really hard task for people. Some people are, just can't say no. They say yes to everything, but then are quite, you know, tired and sad and burnt out when they realise they just, they can't, they can't do it all, all right? Um, it helps you see where you need to make change. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, because we need to, we can't keep doing what we've always done because if we keep doing what we've, we've always done, we'll probably get the same results we've always got, which is probably less um, than we want or deserve. Okay. And many great people before me taught me that. And um, so that's why it's really important you be clear, you know, on what's possible for you. Um, it helps reduce your reactivity. So sometimes we're charging through life at 100 miles an hour and we're reacting and we're getting angry about this and upset about this and, you know, just firing off 10 million types of different emotions. And it's because we've just got so much on our plate and we're just trying to be everything to everyone. And when we're really focused and we know our path and we know our track, there is a sense of calmness that comes with it. And it's incredible. And, um, and I, I don't know, I always strive for it personally myself. Um, so I would encourage you to, you know, give it a, give it a go. Um, motivation helps you keep track of your progress. Because here's something that most people don't notice about themselves is how great they are. So every day, most people are greater than the day before. Okay, because... They're doing great things in the world and they're helping people and they're, you know, getting up and making a difference. But we're not sitting back quietly enough 
and being grateful to ourselves for what we're doing. So this is what these sorts of future plans are great because when you actually sit annually and you reflect on what you wrote the year before, you kind of go, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine myself saying that now. Like I'm so different. And it's just such a great way. It's, it's, it's that self-coaching, self-mentoring that you're doing. It's, it's really um, noticeable. You get more energy. You become a positive vibe, vibrated spirit. Like you really, it's called leveling up and you really start manifesting those just really positive environments. It's, it's um, a really, it's just a strong, vital feeling that you get. And basically, you're more likely to achieve everything you set out to achieve because you're really focused and targeted on it. So what do you think, Charlotte, of the benefits of a future plan? Do you think that let's do it, let's just get on with it, let's create it? Uh, yeah, no, it, it absolutely, it's great to have a future plan. The, the, I struggle because I, I complete my future plan and then I go, oh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> so it's and like it's taking it up the next level. Yes. So here's the great thing. We're going to actually get to that today. We're going to talk about what's those little steps, those little 1% changes that we can start doing to get our vision in, in action. Okay. So we're going to talk about that today. So that's a great point. And I think we can really integrate it into today. So what do we need to think about to make a vision of me in the future. Okay, so this is a question here. Like, so what are you focused on now? Um, so what do you want to be? I mean, at different points in, my life, in our life, we're different things and, and I get that. But if we're right now in this moment, I want you to reflect and I want you to go, what is your dream? You know, like, if you want to think really big at this point, why not? You know, you're allowed to go, go big if you like, you know. This, this could be, I mean, this could be 10-year you, could be 20-year you. I don't, you know, I don't want to restrain you and I don't want to restrict you. Um, but, you know, what do you want? And then, so, you know, in this first phase, I want you to just write it down. So if it's... Um, you know it might be I just want to keep doing what I'm I, I want to keep doing what I'm doing now that's awesome too because you might be in this really great space where you're really happy with what you're doing now um and then so give it give it a title it might be um keep doing what I'm doing now all right let's go with that so the, the next question you can follow through, and if you're doing this five-year plan in the document that we have here at Pepper, um, which I'll just sort of hold up to the camera like that, um, you'll actually see all of these steps go through. So the next question um, is, what is social you? So for you to back yourself and actually get to that place where you can be um, fulfilling your dream, you have to go ask yourself, what is the social you going to look like in that status? So what's your relationship status? Will you be married, single, divorced, in an open relationship? Will it be with children, without children, with animals, without animals? Like just try to, I, I think what you've got to do when you're visioning is you've got to see yourself from all perspectives as possible. So have a think about that for a moment. You know, um, is it with the kids um, and, you know, um, because if you already have children, I don't know that you're going to give them away, um, uh, you know. So if you have those children in, in your life, is it five years down the track and maybe they have grown up and left the house by then, that could be a possibility. And that's really important to think about because, um, you know, we know from looking at is, you know, psychological sort of journals about that concept of empty nesting that people um, who are prepared for their children to grow up and move out suffer less, uh, suffer less from empty nest syndromes than people who have thought ahead and realise that's a very great possibility. So, yes, think about those things. 
And what do you look like socially? So are you going to keep yourself really busy, always keeping up with friends or and have multiple friends and lots of different sort of spheres because you're really busy? Or are you going to be less busy and have a more of a, you know, it's tight circle of friends who really are your family, you know? What does that look like? Um, and what will you be happy with? And see, I think this is the whole point. At every step you're writing this out, it's what you determine, what you want. It's not what other people think you should have. So that's always what you want. The next point is where will you live? Will you be living where you're living now? Or will you be living at the Bahamas? Will you be, I don't know, I, I would, I, you know, as long as it is, once again, on your terms. Emotionally, how will you be present? Um, you know, who will, I guess this is where we ask ourselves, who, who will support me to achieve my goals? So thinking about all the current people you have in your world, you know, can you see, you know, just, I mean, you might need to even close your eyes for a minute and go, hmm, all the people I have in my life now, if I quietly close my eyes and I think about it, are they in this future plan? Hmm. Will they support me and give me the energy I need? Hmm. It's a good question. So I want you to really think about all those people, um, the support of positive people, because they're the people you, who will help you with your goal. Because when you have written up all of this plan, it is encouraged that you go and have a conversation with a friend and you share your plan. And you say, you know what, I've committed. I'm sitting, I've, sitting, I've sat down, I've written this out and I'm going to do this. I love you and I want you to help me to, to make sure I keep this vision alive, please. Don't let me just put it away and never look at it again. I really want this to happen, okay? So the positive people. And then you have to then think about you know, who are, who do I need in my life? So maybe I think about all those people that are my supporters and who have my back. But, you know, there might be someone else who I haven't thought of yet. You know, there might be some other people who maybe I will get a mentor. Maybe I'll get a coach. Maybe um, I will get someone in my life who might possibly help drive this forward with me. Okay, so that might be, I might get a counsellor. I might consider engaging in some of the social support services that are within my organisation. Um, geez, there is a lot of avenues we can put in here as well. So have a think about that. Uh, and also then in the next part is um, who potentially are the people, and I, this, is, this is why this document tends to be a bit private sometimes, because who are the people that I might have to discard? <laughs> so the energy vampires, who do we have in our life who are taking our energy? And, you know, and I'll be honest, that you allow them to take your energy, okay? They're not giving you any value, you know, you've committed to them for maybe possibly all of your life, but takers gonna keep on taking, you know? Um, so how could I change that? Um, and I'm not saying, you know, you, you sort of go up to them and go, all right, I've had a think about it. And yeah, you're not really going to fit in anymore. You've got to go. <laughs> I'm not saying let's do that. But I'm saying, you know, you might actually have to make a bit of a goal plan about consciously distancing yourself from these people. Okay? Because... Um, there, because what's going to happen is if you have these negative drain, these, these draining energy folk in your life, what happens is you're going to progress forward and you're going to make change. And these people are going to notice that. And they oh, potentially um, may get quite reactive to you wanting to change. Um, so that can be a bit of a problem. So, when we're, so, so once again, when we're thinking about those negative people, who might want to hold us back, um, that could take us a whole goal statement in ourselves just to be mindful of those people. And we might have to work, that might take a bit of work to actually detach ourselves from those people 
confidently um, because it can be quite difficult. Um, and then how do I distance myself, you know? Um, and, and that's what I'm saying, like that's a whole goal statement in itself. So you really need to be, have a mindful sort of idea around how you're going to do that. Then we get to that point where we think, when I make this change in myself, um, you know, and I'm this new best version of myself that I'm really happy about, um, you know, how will that benefit the world around me? So that's all about, um, you know, having impact on the, on the community around me. So when I've changed it up and I've, and I've and really grown myself in the direction that I want to be in, how, you know, would that have impact um, and benefit to maybe some volunteer groups, some community groups that I might extend myself to join? Okay, it might be, um, so, you know, for me personally recently, um, I've really become a member of Orange Sky, um, which is a really good um, service that provides um, conversation and um, closed washing service to people in need. Um, and you drive around in a truck and you pull up and you uh, um, support people to wash and dry their clothes. And while you're doing that, you just check in and you ask them how they're going. Um, and that can, you know, that supports people who, you know, are living a bit hard in life, you know, and have got some disadvantage. So that's something that it, it might grow you towards being that sort of version of you that you're really proud of. Um, and what level of health and exercise will you need to support you in this vision? Okay, well, you have to start moving a bit more. Maybe, I mean, I'm not talking about joining a gym and start running, you know, um, 10K mar 25K marathons or anything like that. I'm sort of talking about just moving more. You know, will I make a conscious ex um, effort to walk twice a week or three times a week? Will I not take my car anymore and will I use public transport? It's those sorts of things that you, you just think. And what hobbies? Who? Um, that's a big thing that people don't have a lot of anymore is hobbies. Um, because we spend so much time working, we spend so much time with family and friends that sometimes we're not got any other interests anymore. So really thinking about hobbies because hobbies are all part of that self-care world where we go, what would I do? So, you know, um, does Renata or Charlotte, do you have a hobby? I'm a crocheter. Yeah, I do some painting. It's been a while now that um, I haven't um, done anything, but last weekend I just went out, got some canvases, so I'll probably, I'll start doing again soon. Awesome. And so that's what, at this point, we'd be thinking about how can we nourish that hobby and really make it important for our self-care to do that and engage in it? Then comes a financial question because it's very nice to have the dream, but, you know, what is the income that you need to be able to afford it? Um, so, you know, is doing what you're doing now, that's enough? Um, what will be your source of income? So you might have to do some research on this one. You might have to start looking around and seeing what income people do get for other positions that you hope to achieve. Um, you know, or if you're going in for early retirement, well, how much money do you need to retire early? That sort of thing. So that's where you might want to think more about that as well. And then finally, what new skills might you need to be who you want to be in the future? Okay, so it might be that, you know, um, for instance, I always have that sort of note that if you think you might be the next CEO, you know, of an organisation, you know, what qualifications do you have to, what are, you know, the qualifications that are favoured if you're going to be a CEO of an organisation? Is it something like an MBA um, where you do the Masters of Business um, Administration? So, you know, do you need an MBA? And then, Maybe that's going to be a big focus of your future plan is actually planning out where you're going to do that, integrate that MBA learning into your future plan as well. So think about the skill set. It might be uh, to be an educator yes. uh, in tertiary education. Ah, fabulous. And so, but to do that, 
uh, I have to decide whether I'm going to do go the PhD route or whether I go the Masters in Education route. I love learning and so I really love the idea of teaching other people to love learning. Yes. Yeah. You know, and so that would be in your five-year plan is then going, well, do I want this road or do I want that road? So, you know, some of your goals then may have to sit around thinking about, well, maybe if I have to have some conversations with people who've got a Master's of Education first, then talk to some other people who've got done the PhD pathway and see which one, you know, it more sort of aligns with my values and strengths as well. Yeah. 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 So, no, that would be part of your those little incremental pieces that you're going to do to step yourself towards your vision. So, yeah, that's awesome. I love that you also have a bit of imagery with that um, around what it might look like when you're there. So that's fabulous because that's what this is all about. So by the time you have gone through those 14 question points um, on that in, in the document, you'll go through all of those points. And by the time you get to the end, you're starting to have a really good um, feel about what you're going to look like and what it's going to be in, you know, version new 2.0. So what does Charlotte 2.0 look like? What does Renata 2.0 look like? So that's what we sort of get to. Um, and I... Um, and so it's a, this point is about visioning it. So this is where you get to do craft, I think. And you get to pull out, you know, start cutting up magazines or um, making a Pinterest board or, you know, cutting and pasting the snippy tool out of Google sites and making something come together for you so that you can see, like we have here in these images, this, you know, that you are strong, that you have a sense of peace and joy and balance and calm with some travel included, but the freedom to be yourself. Okay, so these are all sorts of, you might have a board that looks like that or you might do a template that looks like this. Um, it's, it's all up to you, really. I mean, this is a beautiful thing about visioning. Um, as it says here, the sky is the limit. Um, this is your imagination, your creation. So it is all up to you. But you have to make this board and put it somewhere where you can see it every day, where you can really understand what you're trying to move yourself to. And the great thing about this board, and this is sometimes why it is good to do them electronically and have them like as your screensaver sometimes on your computer, is because as you might change your thinking, like you might go, oh, no, that's definitely the path I want, so I'm going to take that picture out and I'm going to put this picture in. Or, no, I definitely want that, so that's going and I want this, you know, I want this document in there. And so that's the thing. You're keeping all those things that are really important in holding your vision together in one space that you can see every day. Okay. So that's a really important thing because you have to attach a feeling, okay? You, and this is this point of it, it's got to feel strong. It's got to feel tight. It's got to give you power and energy. Um, and so if it isn't, there's some, we have to go back and do a bit of a rework, okay? So that's what I always tell people when we're creating vision, it's got to be strong. And, and this is all based in psychology. I'm not, um, you know, I, I learn this from people who are many, um, you know, who spend a lot more in the psychology realm than I have. Um, and there is, I, I've actually um, linked the article here for you to really highlight to you the importance of having this positive vibrational emotion attached to a vision statement, have a higher level of success when you have a strong feeling attached. And the, this whole article talks about it quite in depth and has done some studies with people on the same topic. So um, please read that as well. But 
if ever you feel that you walk away from your vision and you're a couple of, you know, you might be a couple of months in, you're really passionate about a beginning, but you're kind of going, oh, no, that was too much. Like, it didn't really work. Well, that's telling you you've lost sight of your vision. So maybe the vision wasn't right, actually. And so what you need to do is go back and reinvest, okay? You might need to take some of it out because it might not be right for you. So take some of it out, think about it, and what can I put back in to re-inspire myself to keep moving forward, okay? Because once you've got that really strong visual statement, and this is why the, 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 it's got to have a strength to you, um, you know, and that's why this is so important, it's all about you, um, you've got to have that strength statement because once you have that strength statement and you're attached to it, um, you will find that the little incremental changes you need to make every day to become that next best you is a lot easier. So, um, so for instance, when I'm um, coaching people, I find that when I'm coaching people, a lot of people say to me, right, my vision is... Um, I am going to be 72 kilos. Okay. All right. I don't know. So 72 kilos, like is that, so what will 72 kilos get you? You know, and that's where we have to start really eking out what 72 kilos means. Because if someone just goes with that, nut, nah, I'm going to be 72 kilos, that's a vision. And then they wonder why. Um, they still eat chips and they still eat chocolate and they go, oh, I'll worry about 72 kilos tomorrow. I really, I've had a hard day and I'm going to eat these chips. And it's just because 72 kilos is, um, it's just a factual thing. It's just, it's a number. It's, it doesn't have a lot of anything attached to it unless you back it with some feeling, some visioning, some what would that look like? What will I feel like? Where will I go? Well, you know, I feel just like, how will I feel like that? And so you actually have to do a bit more work in there um, to really um, attach yourself to that habit. Or, because once you have that, you'll do the little incremental changes. You'll find yourself going, you know, yeah, I'm really tired. I'm really tired and I don't want to go for a walk today. But you know what? I'm so I, this vision of being strong is so important to me. I'm going for a walk. Right. And you'll go for a walk. All right. Because your vision is so right to you at this moment that you'll just pick yourself up and you'll go do what you need to do because your vision is stronger than the reasons why you shouldn't. Okay. So this is where the emotional component is so important. Okay. So this incredible man James Clear talks about this one percent better every day so he's sort of saying you know what you can make these massive goal statements and you can be really rigid with yourself and you can you know drive yourself bonkers if you like with setting you know goal parameters and you know and if you're a checklist checklist person awesome you'll love this and you'll embrace it but if you're not how do you make sure you get 1% better every day, okay? You really have to embed yourself in what you're willing to change. What are the things that you're willing to give up? So can I ask you now, just right now, um, to think about, if you think about your vision, what are you willing to change to make that vision happen? Charlotte, do you want to, have you got anything that, you know, you're willing to change to make your vision happen? Going back to school, yes. I know that that will take up a lot of my time and energy and uh, which is why I like it to be in my five-year plan. Uh, it, because my children are young and so if I decide to go back to university again, having promised them that I wouldn't go back and do another master's uh, four years ago that I'm now thinking I might do another one so just I'm not quite ready to, to lose that time 
because once I commit to going back to university, then then that will pull me away from um, my social life. So yeah. I have to be willing to give that up. So that is a great example. Thank you for sharing that because that is a great example of I am willing. So this is my vision. I want to be an educator. I am willing to make change, but I'm really thinking about the date of that. And that is probably going to be in the, you know, the third, fourth or fifth year of my plan. Awesome. That is so great because that's quite an insightful plan. And it's quite, you know, it's, it's, you know, it gives you those aspirational things to work towards. So it will keep you driving on that path that you have. So no, that's great. Um, you know, I've just done it recently where I've got a very strong future plan of self and, um, and you know, I had, um, I've made a choice and what I'm willing to change was to give up this job as national pepper manager and walk away um, so that I can follow my path um, which is to be, um, you know, a health and wellness coach and a life coach um, professionally in my own business. So that is what I will do now. So, yeah, it's about those steps you want to take to keep moving yourself forward because I, I just know how much impact um, I feel I have when I'm helping people and I'm coaching them. So that's the energy that I want to keep having now moving forward. So that's another example um, Renata, have you got anything? I mean, I, I'm thinking I'm doing something quite dramatic. I'm not saying that everyone has to do that. Um, simplistic things are lovely too. Um, have you got anything, Renata? I think um, one small step that I've taken, I was exactly one of um, the things that you've mentioned. Uh, I'm not a checklist person and, uh, and I have become one just, uh, yes, from probably the beginning of this month and um and it is there now i can clearly see where i had to go or what i've missed out and i have to still achieve and that just makes it easier to just uh organize the workload and uh in a bit of life as well with the checklist yeah renata thank you like that is oh, i was looking for a simple example and you just fed right into that thank you renata but how see how much power it doesn't matter if it's large or small it's that it's that one percent better every day you know making that checklist and that's I think that you know um a lot of people don't have a vision of the future and and they just meander through life doing what they do and you know and I'm not dissing that at all because people have great lives just doing that because it might be part of their personality and their drive to just, yeah, let it be. You know, the fates have got it figured out. I'll just, you know, float along with that. Um, but if there is some really significant places you want to go and places you want to be and you're feeling stuck in your current way of being, you're going to have to put pen to paper and really think about it. I know, it's a bit dull. Um, and that's why a lot of people don't do it and get around to it because it, they feel like it is a little bit dull. Um, but in my experience and in working with lots of people, it's incredibly exciting. And to see people who after years of working on their plan, the different people they are, it's, I, it, I get just, I get empowered by watching them, you know, it's just so exciting. So we're getting to the end, of course. And I guess that's the big question is um, tomorrow, What's going to be your 1% change? Having, you know, now that you, you know, you probably watch this at home and for the late, and, and, you know, for the people here today, what is the 1% different thing you're going to do tomorrow to start the new process, to start the new, the new way of being? Just think if there is just, a, you know, that, that sort of, minor change that we can start working on tomorrow. I think um, one thing that I've been doing, I've just changed jobs again. So uh, in that I've done um, some training and uh, it's all about um, uh, lean thinking and lean um, process, processing things. And, uh, and I think I've, that's one of the things that I'm trying to implement now. So 
So just um, seeing what is that useful and that that I need to do and what is that I, I can put in another box to see, well, can it wait and uh, it's, is it even attainable or it's not going to be useful anyway, so I don't really need to do it. So I was just trying to uh, process things that way. Um, yeah, um, as I said, it just gives like a sense of empowerment in many ways and, uh, and happiness as well. <laughs> it right. is that um, you avoid a lot of stuff that you don't really need to do. So that's, that's quite good. There are so many people who could do something similar. What do I really need to do today? instead of what am I, you know, because sometimes we're doing things just because we put them in the calendar and they're meetings we always have and they're things we always do, but do we really need to do them? So, oh, I love that challenge of yourself. That's just, well, you're on the pathway of the 1% to Mario Renata. So we've, we've, Renata's, Renata was already converted before she came. So <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I'm going to fill that booklet in. Yes. And that is your 1% of change tomorrow, Charlotte. Yeah, you're actually going to go and you're going to create that vision and you're going to surround yourself because you're then going to build it and then you're going to share it with other people and say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to look like. And well, this is the final thought for the day. And I think it's really important because sometimes when we're, you know, making these big vision statements, we do them for a little bit and then we give up. Okay, because as I said, they weren't the right vision for us. We, 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 yeah, we didn't really connect in with ourselves properly when we created it, you know. Um, so if you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. There we go. How simplistic is that in a perfect world? And so here's a few references. I will also into the learning management system put that article for you if you do want to make just learn more about the role of those positive, positive emotional attackers um, when we're trying to, you know, really engage with ourselves. Um, so I will sort of post that up in the board as well. But also, I just want to, I always try to put a few links in um, which just might be interesting for you to watch later. And um, this great just eight minutes where James Clear just dynamically talks about that 1%. Just change it. Go on. And he's just dynamic and he talks about that. And then um, this one I love up the top here. It's all about, because there he is, um, reading literature about making change. There, It's a multi-million dollar industry. Like it's a billion, billions and billions of dollar industry. These, so you can read book after book. You could read for the rest of your life about this art of doing change. So this is just um, a 12 minute clip which just highlights some of the key books and overviews, what might be important, what you might get out of it. I think it's, I thought there were some things that were really good in there. And then of course, you can't go past Stephen Covey with his seven habits of highly effective people. It's done in a nice little pictogram, six minutes. It's a bit interesting too. Um, I just put that variety in there just to stimulate your thinking and go, yeah, that is another way of thinking as well. So if that, I think, sees the end of us today. And if you want any information, as always, the Pepper Mentoring website. So, and uh, Yeah, so go to the website, um, see what we've got on. Next month, we're actually talking about difficult communication um, because as mentors, it's something that does come up. And so how can we do that with more confidence? is where we're going to head to with next month's conversation. So I look forward to seeing you then.